Companies prepare the statement of cash flows differently from the three other basic financial statements. It is not prepared from an adjusted trial balance, but rather it requires detailed information concerning the changes in account balances. So we need a comparative balance sheet which indicates the amount of changes in assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. The statement of cash flows deals with cash receipts and cash payments, so we must adjust the effects of the use of accrual accounting to determine cash flows. So we need an income statement to help us determine the amount of net cash provided or used by operating activities during the period. And lastly, we'll need additional information which includes transaction data, such as the amount of borrowings and repayments on a notes payable. Preparing the statement of cash flows involves three major steps. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about each step at a very high level and then when what we'll do is we'll take a look at a business and we'll have some numbers and we'll actually talk about each of these steps in more details while we actually prepare the statement of cash flows. All right, the first step is we're going to convert our net income from an accrual basis to a cash basis. We will need to analyze the current year income statement as well as a comparative balance sheet. More specifically, we will need to look at non-cash current assets and liabilities, such as accounts receivable, inventory, accounts payable, and wages payable. Right? The exception is we will exclude any short-term investments, because that would be considered an investing activity, and any notes payable that are owed to financial institutions, and that would be considered a financing activity. Step two involves analyzing a comparative balance sheet as well as selected additional information to determine their effects on cash. More specifically, we're going to analyze changes in non-current or long-term assets and liabilities accounts as well as stockholders' equity accounts. We're going to record those changes as investing and financing activities or if in the event they are a non-cash transaction, we will disclose that. The last step, or step three, compares the net change in cash on the statement of cash flows with the change in cash reported on the balance sheet. The difference between the beginning and ending balance is the net increase or decrease for the period. We will prepare a statement of cash flows for computer services company. So we will need their current and previous year balance sheets or comparative balance sheet, their current year income statement, as well as related financial information for the current year. This is the current year income statement for Computer Services Company. The net cash inflow or outflow for the year is the same amount as the increase or decrease in cash on the balance sheet. So we know the computer services company's cash increased by $22,000. Preparing the statement of cash flows requires an analysis of the balance sheet. And I want you to focus on the change that occurs in each balance sheet account. When we prepare the statement of cash flows, we're relying on a simple manipulation of the balance sheet equation. Again, if you remember from financial accounting, our assets must equal our liabilities plus our stockholders' equity. We can manipulate that equation and write it this way. We can say that the change in cash has to equal the change in liabilities plus the change in stockholders' equity minus any change in non-cash assets. As a result, any transaction that changes cash must be accompanied by a change in liabilities, stockholders' equity, or non-cash assets. And that's why we need a comparative balance sheet. As I just stated, preparing the cash flow statement requires an analysis of the balance sheet. We focus on the change that occurs in each balance sheet account. I just want to remind or warn students that you need to use the additional information to help explain the change. For example, we can see that bonds payable increased by $110,000. If we go to the additional information, more specifically number three, we can see that the company issued $110,000 of bonds in exchange for land. 
This is actually an example of a significant non-cash activity, and we would not report this in the statement of cash flows. Instead, the company will report this activity in a separate schedule at the bottom of the statement of cash flows or in a separate note. And then the last thing I want to mention is that equipment increased by $17,000. You don't see it on this slide because this slide is focused on liabilities and stockholders equity. It's actually on the previous slide where we showed the assets. The point I want to make here is that the change in assets was 17,000, but if you look at the additional information, you can see that in number two and number four, right, the company actually purchased new equipment for 25,000 and they sold equipment with a cost of $8,000. So it's really important that you use the additional information to help you explain the change that occurs in each account. Okay, so we know that any transaction that changes cash must be accompanied by a change in liabilities, stockholders' equity, or non-cash assets. So we can follow the general guidelines when we prepare the statement of cash flows. Operating activities will involve income statement items, such as net income and depreciation, but we're also going to look at the change that occurs in non-cash current assets and current liabilities, such as accounts receivable and accounts payable. Investing activities are going to involve cash flows resulting from changes in investments and long-term assets, such as property, plant, and equipment. And finally, the last one, our financing activities, will involve cash flows resulting from changes in long-term liabilities as well as stockholders' equity accounts. The exception is retained earnings. And if you remember from financial accounting, retained earnings is going to increase for net income, but we're going to actually reduce it for any dividends. Net income is considered an operating activity, whereas dividends is considered a financing activity. So when you look at the balance sheet, Rather than think of each line item as an asset, a liability, or stockholder's equity, I'd like you to think about them as an operating, investing, or financing activity. Let's look at current assets. We have accounts receivable, inventory, and prepaid expenses. These amounts are, res are results from our ongoing operations, so I'd like you to think of these as operating activities. Whereas property, plant, and equipment represents an investing activity. Again, if we purchase equipment or if we sell it, in either case, these are considered investing activities. And then the only thing I want to note is that the current year depreciation expense will increase accumulated depreciation. And this account will decrease when a sale occurs, such as a piece of equipment. Right, let's look at our liabilities and stockholders' equity accounts. Again, if we take a look at our current liabilities, we have both accounts payable and income tax payables. And again, I want you to think of these amounts resulting from our ongoing operations, so they are considered an operating activity. Right, we have an increase in both bonds payable and common stock. Again, I want you to think of these as our financing activities. Again, how did we choose to finance our operations? Did we issue debt in the form of bonds payable, or did we issue stock, which would see a change in our common stock account? And then lastly, we have our retained earnings. And when it comes to the change in retained earnings, I want you to think of it's mixed in that it contains both an operating as well as a financing activity. Right, we consider net income operating activity, whereas the payment of dividends is considered a financing activity.